tuned in to another episode of Say What with me, Nithya, and... And I'm Bernadine. And today we're going to be tackling South Korea's recent decision to take steps to curb the over-sexualized performances by teenage stars in the country's thriving K-pop scene. What's this about, Bernadine? So what's happening is that South Korea is taking further measures and stepping up laws by imposing an R rating on overly sexualized performances by minors. So there's there's already an existing bill, right, Mm -hmm. that currently prohibits minors under the age of 19 from performing sexually suggestive scenes and wearing overly revealing outfits. What's new about this revision then? So actually, by imposing R rating and R rating on films, music videos, and TV shows for Um, those that excessively highlight or zoom in onto body parts such as their breasts or their hips, um, they're actually reducing the accessibility of such content to minors. So basically, they're cutting down on a large proportion of their fan base, Mm. which um, has the intention of, you know, being a disincentive to producers and directors to even go ahead with such choreography in the first place. Yep. So actually, what's interesting about this is that the Korean pop culture was originally seen by the government as a platform for Korea to boost their global competitiveness in terms of culture and tourism. Wow, that's some progress they've made yeah. there. Uh, so how are they planning to implement this? Because I know one way they're thinking of doing this is that uh, is making individuals above the age of 18 typing type their social security number if they want to log on mm. um, you know, through the internet to access such music videos. W- what are the other measures they're planning on taking? Well, one other measure is by them screening music videos um, only on late, late night shows. But this is based on the assumption that, you know, the 13 and 14 year olds would be asleep. <laughs> yeah, that is an <laughs> assumption we make nowadays. Yeah. Well, talking about 13 and 14 year olds, uh, it is a little disturbing. Um, not a little, it's quite disturbing, actually, that you do have 13 and 14 year old K-pop artists who have to um, dress provocatively and, mm. um, you know, perform sexually suggestive dance moves in order to get their songs and videos out there. Yeah, actually, I'm not surprised that they're stepping up measures. I mean, Asia, we are pretty conservative, and Korea is too. Well, yeah, but I'm actually, I'm still a little surprised. I mean, let's um, the way I look at it, you have a number of American music, vi- American and British music mm. videos that are um, also quite explicit to certain extents, and yet they're shown on MTV really easily. There's no ban in Asia. Um, on explicit American and British music videos. Yeah, that's true. Actually, I I do know that although such um, influences are not banned in Asia per se, but they do have some regulations. Like, you know, on YouTube, although um, the so-called less sexualized uh, music videos can be seen by the general audience, but for the more provocative stuff, you actually have to log in to be able to view the content. And you can only view it if you are above eighteen. Right. Yeah, I've I've noticed that too. But um, you, they're still they're still very accessible, of course, to minors. Yeah. Right on MTV, <laughs> it's not uh, you, that difficult. So um, I wouldn't say that the, you know, the target base or you know fan base has changed that much, at least in for those videos. Yeah, that's true. I think another issue here is also about. Um, not wanting your own minors being exploited, whether it is being exploited by another industry or even by your own media. Right, yeah, okay. So then we're looking at a twofold reason behind this bill, right? There's the mm. fact that you don't want minors watching such uh, videos where you are commercializing, you know, uh, you're commercializing teenagers as sex objects in the as sex objects Mm -hmm. and at the same time you don't want your uh, minors to be exploited by the media and by the industry yeah I think feasibility here would be an issue because it's like an invisible line you don't know where the boundary is set you don't know what exactly is overly sexual like for MTV for instance there's almost no line there's no boundary to that but there's no precedent to this and there is no clear line on okay producers cannot do this they cannot get um the minors to do this right yeah yeah i think that is actually uh one major factor that needs to be considered in this bill because um i mean let's think about it right obviously people are already aware that there is a problem with the way minors are represented in the k-pop industry mm-hmm. and then uh which is why there is an existing bill but at the same time the fact that they're revising this bill just shows the shows the uh, just shows us that the current bill is nowhere near as effective as it should be 
Mm, that's true. So then, how do we know how effective this new bill will be? I mean, like, for example, um, how are you? What exactly are you going to set your standards as? Because are are you going to measure the number of inches shorts should be, <laughs> or are you going to s- demonstrate which moves are considered sexually provocative and which moves are not considered sexually provocative? And I think mm. more important than all this is what are you going to do with groups that contain certain members which are above eighteen and certain members which are below eighteen? Oh yeah, yeah, that's a tricky you one. You know, so mm. I mean, it's quite difficult. It, I mean, it will be quite difficult to set objective standards, uh, for to s- objective standards by which producers and artists are meant to abide by. Mm, yeah, I think that such laws may be useful for like thirteen year olds and preventing them from you know having to do these sexualized dances. But it doesn't. At the end of the day, I don't think it really solves the problem, but rather moves it back further because the moment the youth performer turns nineteen, they're gonna be pressured to do these sexy dances anyway. So you're not solving right. the thing; you're just moving it back and perpetuating it for later. Right. Yeah, that's true. And I mean, the other thing that struck me was uh, the fact that really this bill is more to prevent girls from being from dressing like dressing up, dressing provocatively, or you know, overexposing their bodies and stuff. There's it's less to do with boys. Mm, yeah, that's true. So in that way girl groups may be disadvantaged yeah i mean that's not the way i'm looking at it because i'm thinking that at if you're a, if you're a girl group um you're a minor girl group for example mm-hmm. then there's more that you need to abide by and they might feel that it's that they're not reaching their target audience simply because they're not being able to um you know showcase whatever the audience wants to see because mm-hmm. let's get real unfortunately to some extent sex does sell yeah so then where you're not and this bill does not say okay boys you know you're not allowed to stru- you're not allowed to strip down you have to be wearing pants and t-shirts at all times mm. um apart from the sexually provocative moves by ma- by males what it's mainly aiming at is girls making sure that they are not over overly exposing their bodies yeah i guess overall this Revised law will be with good intent, and but feasibility will be an issue here. And overall, it may succeed, and only time will tell whether it's actually successful or not in the industry. Yeah, I mean that's usually the case with these things yeah. anyway. So that's it for us, guys. Uh, you can leave your comments or any thoughts that you have uh below this YouTube at the YouTube comment section, or you can email us um n i t y a or Bernadine, B-E-R-N-A-D-I-N-E, at radiopulse.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will see you next week, or rather you'll hear us next week. <laughs> have a good weekend and have a great week ahead.